welcome back. The Coyotes were on the road trying to keep their three game win streak alive against Northern Iowa and the Coyotes sporting those white jerseys. I have to say those are my favorite. They they just look clean. But anyway, in the first quarter, Kai Henry gets the carry. He's going to carry some defenders and some teammates with him for the touchdown and the Coyotes lead seven to zero Panthers. They would strike back as Isaiah Weston just snags it out of the air and we have a tie game. But USD's offense was hot in the first. Austin Simmons finds Billy Conaway for one of his two touchdowns on the day. Conaway is gone for 56 yards. USD would score 21 points in the first capped off with Simmons throwing another touchdown pass that would give the Coyotes a 21 to 14 lead after one. Then in the second, a mistake by Simmons as he throws it right to Panthers Austin Evans. He picks him off and is gone for the pick six. The Panthers would go on to outscore the Coyotes 28 to six the rest of the game as they go on to win 42 to 27. The Jackrabbits have not lost a game since September, and today they tried to make it a six straight win against Indiana State. First quarter, Jay Borg Gibbs finds Hart for a three yard score, and the Jacks lead seven to zero. Indiana State will come right back with a touchdown, but Gibbs is on the attack again. He throws a jump ball to Jackson Yankee, who sticks the landing in the Jacks lead 14 to seven in the second. Gibbs had three touchdowns on the day, and now the Jackrabbits, they get their feet on the their feet on the ground excuse me Pierre Strong scores one of his two rushing touchdowns they go on to score 28 in the second and they go on to win 42 to 23. T area swept the South Dakota class A soccer championships earlier in the day and some thrillers in the class double A championships would not disappoint. First match we have Yankton versus Aberdeen Central midway through the first Aberdeen has the ball and that's Hedich who lets one fly, but Yankton Sadie Fetters dives, makes the save, and that keeps the game scoreless in the second half. But then things begin to heat up. Yankton's Emma Christensen lets a shot fly, and it bounces over the head of the keeper and the goal, and we still have a scoreless game. Two minutes left, though. Yankton's Jaden Boomsma gets the ball in a great spot. She shoots, and she gets it past the goalie for the score, comes through for Yankton, at the right time, and that's all they need as they win the class double A state title one to nothing over Aberdeen Central. And in our finale of the night, Washington faced off against Roosevelt. Midway through the first, Roosevelt Suad Smoljevic gets the ball through past the goalie, and that is our first score of the game. The Warriors are leading one to nothing. Second half, Roosevelt is again threatening to score. The cross comes in but the shot is saved by Langa Langa, who makes the diving save in the game, and they're starting to run out of time. They would need, the Warriors would need one more chance in the game, and that's Kevin Hernandez. He gets the free kick, hooks it, but the goalie nabs it out the air, and Roosevelt hangs on to win over Washington, one to nothing. As you see that Yankton and Aberdeen Central score, and then earlier in the day, like I said, T area, Swept the Class A championship for the boys and the girls. Girls won two to nothing, and boys won one to nothing in double OT. And ever since their loss to Augustana for the key to the city, the Cougars have been on a winning streak, rolling the past two games and looking for a third against Duluth. And what a beautiful day it was. You could wear short sleeve shorts, whatever you wanted. It was just a beautiful day. And it would start on the defensive end for the Cougars as Doran Frederick comes up with the interception. He saves it right off the turf, he kind of pins it on his helmet. But then the next play, this was the player of the day. USF running back, Thurl Reisendorfer sprints past everyone for the touchdown. He is gone for one of his two touchdowns on the day. He also had a career high, 171 rushing yards as the Cougars go on to win 34 to three. Augie was in Minnesota today as they look for their fifth win of the season against Moorhead. First quarter, Devin Jones gets the carry and he's off to the races. He stops on a dime, makes a defender miss, and then it's past both of them for the 42-yard touchdown. Augie leads 7-0, still in the first. Kyle Sadler completes a 10-yard pass in the back of the end zone to Brett Shepley. Augustana is now leading 21-0. Let's go to the second quarter because now it is time for some defense from the Vikings. Kenneth Griffin gets the interception in the back of the end zone to present to prevent the score. He kind of climbed the ladder on that one, folks, as Augie prevails 
48 to three. The Wolves of Northern State were trying to get back on the winning track against Wayne State today. And after being stopped by the Wildcats on defense at the 15 yard line, NSU gets a field goal from Peyton Yu. And after the Wolves scored a touchdown, Wayne State's Andy McCants passes to Corbin Foster, who gets some hard earned yards and sets them up for a field goal by Ethan Knudsen for a 21 yarder. Northern leads 10 to three. And then before halftime, the Wolves will score, adding to their lead. Hunter Trautman finds Greg Lux in the back of the end zone and make it 17 to three Wolves. And this game would go late into double overtime, but Northern is able to win 29 to 26. And the defending champs, oh, and then one more, we have some boards for you. NSIC football, Minnesota State wins, and then GPAC Dort finishes against, gets the win, and then Northwestern defeats Concordia. The defending champ Stampede had a disappointing start to the season, but tonight they look to get their second win against Tri-City. Where in the second period, Stampede are down one, but that's Jacob Lemondowski. He gets the ball, gets the goal on the nice backhand to tie the game. And then in the third period, Tommy Lyon gives the Stampede the lead and they wouldn't look back as they go on to defeat Tri-City for their second win of the season, two to one. The Augustana Vikings volleyball team snapped their three game losing streak last night against St. Cloud. And now they can look to start a win streak against Duluth. And one young Augie fan is kind of ambitious because on that set she actually hits the camera. But Augustana would start out hot as Avery Thorson gets the kill with a soft touch. And that's the first score of the day. The Vikings would try to keep it going. That's Grace Haberland who gets the kill for the Vikings and they will lead by much as five in the first set. And then Duluth would just impose their will. They're able to tie it up at 17 all and they would end up sweeping, sweeping the match in straight sets three to zero. And that's gonna do it for sports. We'll be back in a little bit.